Welcome to 7 Trumpets Prepper and in this video today guys I'm going to show you all how to get hot water using DC powered elements. Now this is a great prep to have around because later down the road when you don't have the electric company anymore and you might not have a generator powerful enough to make you 220 power this right here is a way that you can get heated water using DC power. So let's take a look at it now. Okay guys, now before I begin showing you the actual installation process of how to install these elements, I want to go over something real quick. The resistors that most people have uh, their dump loads go to, um, that's a great way of protecting your system and having that power dump off, but there's another way of using that power and harnessing it for uh, a lot more useful things. This is an SES water heating element, and I'll put some links in the video description where you can get these. Uh, you can get this at Hurricane Wind Power and at MissouriWindAndSolar.com, uh, both places. And this right here, this element, if you look right there, it's rated 12 volts at 300 watts. That's very important that you find your elements that are stamped, okay? Because there's a lot of garbage sold out there on the eBay and on the market and everything, okay? So make sure you get your element at a good place. All right, now I'll show you how to install this here in just a minute. Um, but what I want to get at first is now wiring these things. All right, when it comes to uh, the wiring process, there's two heads, all right? Now, you don't have to worry about which way you're putting the wire in. All that you need to know is that you put your hot, sorry, I just grabbed some wire here real quick, that you put your hot to one side and your ground to the other. And it really doesn't matter. You can put it one to one side and one to the other. Either way, it's, it's not a specific way you have to put that on. Just make sure one wire goes to one, one lead to the other. It's that simple. Now, uh, that's this one here doesn't have an adjustable dial. It just goes straight to it. All right But now this one here Has an adjustable dial all right right there. You can set this thing up to 190 degrees Fahrenheit It's got the temperature sensor lead right here. Here's the sensor lead that tells you uh, how hot the water is lets it sense it and then here's the actual element part wrapped around it um, it's got a good washer uh, around it gasket and it comes with a lead of wire too about six feet um, I would say it's I'm sorry uh, I wouldn't go for a complete six feet but anyway it's a pretty good decent uh, lead the uh, wiring on it is simple too you just put your hot to one and ground to the other it doesn't really matter you don't have to be specific uh, just one to one lead one to the other and whenever you want to set this you just adjust the dial up and it's that simple when you don't want it on you just turn it off now I'll show you some wiring diagrams in just a minute but right now I just want to show you how to thread these things in and install them now to install these elements all that you have to do is make sure that your washer is appropriately seated at the back of this insert the element in where the old element used to be and thread in like so now whenever you install your hot wire and your ground wire I'll get into the wiring diagrams in just a moment but that's all you have had have to do at that point is install those two wires to it now on some water heaters I don't know if you can see this right now because of the lighting and everything but I'll take this off the mount make sure I get this close enough where you can see but right here on some water heaters uh, you can still use the temperature uh, gauge that's in it uh, now depending on the wiring diagram that's in the manual that comes with your water heater you can put the one lead across and then put your common across down to the element and what will happen is the hot will come into the bus bar and then the hot will go down to the element and this common will go straight to the element itself and if it's wired like that in your wiring diagram on your water heater uh, what will happen then is you can still use the temperature adjustment knob and it will power itself by, via DC um, so that is one way to still recoup uh, the temperature adjustment knob that way you can set this the way that you want it and it's not scalding hot or etc not hot enough now um, what I'll do right now is unthread this I'll show you how to put in the other one and uh, the way that you really should seat it so that you can adjust the knob properly and then we'll go over some wiring diagrams now to install the one that already has a temperature adjustment knob on it all you have to do at this point is just bring your wiring uh, leads into the end of this and forget about any of the wiring that's inside of this uh, water heater and you'll just thread it up appropriately into the unit as so now you have to be careful though when threading this because you may have to cut away some of this old metal and uh, foam which at this point that's exactly what I may have to do with this one 
but once that you've screwed that in all the way and seated it you want to just make sure that the adjustment knob is up appropriately and you'll hear it click and so at that point then you can adjust this up to the highest setting that you want but make sure that when you screw that in it seats all the way and hopefully uh, whenever you get that in there seated just make sure that the wire and nothing there's no force against this so like I said you might have to peel some of that back if you're repurposing a water heater but that pretty much concludes the install of both of those elements now something I would say on the other element though is if you want to have this run direct off of a battery bank because I'm about to go into the wiring diagrams I would encourage you to get a marine switch being that this is going to be around a water application and I would mount this switch somewhere nearby the water heater or wherever you're going to have the water source that way if you want this unit turned off you're not constantly drawn from the battery bank uh, you can select this on or off and all you have to do is connect your hot lead on one side and then out on the other and take the common straight to it and that's really it and now at this point right here what I'm going to do now is show you some wiring diagrams on the screen now we can see here on this first wiring diagram that we have the charge controller we have the hot and ground coming in either from a solar application or a wind application where it's going from there is down to the battery bank off the following set of leads now this is a standard charge controller you can find I'll give you an example of it uh, linked to it on eBay and so on from this charge controller you also have a dump load wiring now this dump load can go straight to your heating element now the one that's temperature adjustment I would advise it to be wired straight from the battery bank being that you can turn it on or off but the ones that don't have the temperature adjustment knob would be great for the dump load application if you're just wanting to dump power. Now in diagram two we can see the revision of this that it, the leads are coming from the battery to the element. Now this is where I was explaining that you can use a switch um, to turn this on or off because you don't want that to run constant. Um, but you can also have an on off switch from the dump load to the element if you're not wanting to heat the water as well. Uh, just some food for thought on that. Now as you can see right here, there's leads that come in for your water. Uh, the plumbing comes in and out. Now the uh, solution for dealing with this uh, grid down or um, post-apocalyptic, whatever you want to consider the prepping situation, is that you have a DC pump and once you have your pump installed uh, in with your battery bank whenever you're wanting to run your hot water what you can do is have the leads coming off to your element and to your pump in duality uh, what I mean by that is the, the leads that are going to your pump and to your switch are coming directly from the battery bank together and that way whenever you flip on the the pump the, the heating elements being turned on or you can have them in a singular application where you're heating the water first and then begin the pumping process it's totally up to you but that way you still have uh, water flowing into your unit because now what will happen is later down the road if the uh, uh, water company is no longer operating along with the electric company although you can heat water uh, you're going to have a heck of a time pumping it to the location that you're wanting it within your house. You'll have a warm shower or in your tiny house or RV. Um, you know, the one good thing about having an RV, tiny house, things like that is you already have a DC pump. So now you're heating the water with DC and you're pumping it as well. Um, but uh, being that you do have a um, setup like that, more than likely your elements are already DC. But for those of us that have AC power right now, one thing you want to invest in is a DC pump. Uh, so that you can still circulate the water through your house and uh, very important thing because uh, if you have a bucket of water and you're pumping it through here you can also heat that and I'll show you something with a bucket um, before this video is finished but just one last note on this is that please be careful with this make sure uh, that you always have your electrical disconnected before you do any um, install work on this period alright guys now when you positively absolutely have to have water heated in an emergency and you don't have any other way uh, the last option I would tell you to do is take your bucket cut your hole screw this down into the lid thread that down through the lid all right and heat your water all right I've got a uh, water filtration kit in there right now I just reviewed recently if you want to check the link right there um, but anyway in this particular uh, lid though just cut that thread that down through it hook your positive negative up to the battery put your switch on there so you can flip it on or off okay and 
Then in the other video I've shown, uh, I used one of these right here and the uh, turbo uh, shower that's DC that you can plug up to a battery. Um, you can check the link right there in the video description. Fill you up one of these blue jugs like this or use the bucket. Drop that um, pump down into it and turn it on and you've got you a portable shower um, that's heated and you did it using uh, battery power. And uh, like I said, you can check the link right here and in the video description below to go to the uh, portable shower uh, video that I've done a whole uh, demonstration on, wiring it to the battery and everything. But just on the fly, if you had to, that's that's the last stitch effort option that you could use. As long as you had the shower and then you got this element and a switch to go to the battery bank, um, you're golden. And just let that preheat the water and then flip the turbo shower on and you're good to go. So guys, I hope this video has been a help to you, and I hope it's been inspirational that you can still get hot water even after the electric company's gone one day. So until we see you again here at Seven Trumpets Prepper Channel, I hope you have a most blessed day in Yahushua name.